Hi everyone, it's Karen the Geordie Grandma. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Uh, I've been watching a lot of TV box sets on Netflix and BBC iPlayer recently. So I thought I'd share seven of my favourite ones. I'm always looking for ideas, ideas of new series to watch. So I thought it might be a good idea to share these with you in case you're looking for something new. So they're in no particular order, so I'll just go through them. I've got some notes written down, so if I keep looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes. So the first one I watched recently is a series on BBC iPlayer called Killing Eve. Now this is about uh, a woman called Eve who works for MI5. At the start of the series, she kind of is desk bound. She works at a desk uh, and she gets drawn into becoming a spy herself. Uh, and she ends up hunting this, this female assassin called Villanelle. Now, Eve is played by Sandra Oh, who used to be in Grey's Anatomy, and uh, Villanelle is played by a girl called Jodie Comer, who is, I mean, they're both brilliant actresses. There's two series of this, and I've watched all of them. Um, and Eve and Villanelle become quite obsessed with each other. Villanelle's killing lots of people, obviously she's an assassin, and Eve's hunting her down, but they do become obsessed with each other, and it, it becomes a strange sort of relationship. It, it's it's funny in parts, um, it's really well written, it's quite violent in parts as well, so if you're not into that kind of thing, this might not be your cup of tea. But I just thought this was a really good series, it really drew you in, I kind of had to binge watch it until I'd finished. Um, I think there was six episodes, was there six or nine? There might have been nine episodes in each series, but there was enough to get your teeth into. And like I say, the, the, um, the main characters, even v Villanelle, brilliant characters. Villanelle was, is a fascinating character. I believe these have been adapted from uh, a book, uh, or a, was it a comic book or a book, one of the two. Um, but I just thought the character of Villanelle was brilliant. I mean, she's she's got no no emotion whatsoever. She she doesn't care that she's killing people. She, you know, she she gets a kick out of it, and she's she's funny, and and it's just she's quite fascinating, a really fascinating character. So I definitely recommend um, Killing Eve. The next one is something completely different to Killing Eve, and this is RuPaul's Drag Race. Now, I know RuPaul's Drag Race has been around the American one, especially for quite a long time, but I only started watching it last year. I watched the American one on Netflix, and once I'd watched a couple of episodes, that was it. I was hooked. I think I watched 10 series in a very short space of time. I was just hooked on it. Uh, if you don't know what RuPaul's Drag Race is, it's kind of like um, X Factor for drag queens, um, but they don't, well they do sing actually, but it's it's mainly, uh, it starts off with maybe 12, 14 drag queens and um, they have to do sort of catwalks where they have to make their own outfits and they get themes and they have to they make little videos for adverts and uh, things like that. And it's just, it's so funny. It really is funny. There's some, I mean, there's some brilliant drag queens that, you know, really, really effective looking as, as women. Um, and some of the clothes that they come up with are, are really nice. You know, I'd, 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 possibly some of them you would wear yourself if you're not a drag queen. Um, and there's one part of, the, there's one section in each series called um, the Snatch Game, which is basically like, uh, or our version of blank well it's like oh it's like blankety blank um but obviously with a bit of a you know a comic twist on it for drag queens and the idea is that each of the drag queen has to impersonate some celebrity uh, and they play the blankety blank game or the snatch game and there's just some some, some brilliant impersonations in the in the UK drag race, which is the series that I'm supposed to be talking about, uh, which has just been on BBC iPlayer recently. In the in the UK version, there was a drag queen called the Vivian, and she did this impression of Donald Trump, and it was absolutely spot on. It was hilarious. 
it's the best impression of Donald Trump I've ever seen. So even if you don't like watching, you know, shows about drag queens, it's worth watching just for that impression. Really, really liked it. Um, Michelle Visage is one of the judges and they have guest judges every week. Uh, Graham Norton was a guest judge on the UK version. And it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a simple program to watch. It's easy to watch. Lovely to, you know, curl up on the set on a cold winter night and watch RuPaul's UK Drag Race. Very good. And there's going to be a second series, which is, uh, which is good too. The third thing is also on BBC iPlayer. Um, and it was called Hidden. Now, this is a detective series. It's set in Wales. Uh, and it's got um, Sean Rhys Williams in it, who is the, the lead detective, Caddy John. And Sean Rhys Williams was, used to, if you watch Emmerdale, she was in Ed, uh, she played Jenny in Emmerdale. Um, it took me a while to think, I think I know this face. And it took, it took a few minutes to think, that's where she's from. I kind of, when I'm watching these series, I've got IMDB ready on my phone because I always like to, if I recognise somebody's face and I can't remember where I've seen them from, I like to look up and see what else they've been in. So I always have that open on my phone. So Hidden is, it's set in Wales, it's a, a detective series and the first series, there's just a second series started, but there's a, the first series, it starts where um, they find the dead body of a girl um, and as they start investigating, it turns out that there's a series of girls gone missing and they're all linked to, to this same case. There's eight episodes of it and it was really, it was easy to watch. Um, you wanted, as the one episode ended, you wanted to watch the next one. And it also follows, you get a glimpse into the lives of the two detectives who are Caddy John and Owen Vaughan, who are the main ones on the case. And they, they, they both obviously have their own problems as, a, as in any detective programme. Um, but it's nice to know that there's a second series started because you'll obviously get to know a little bit more of the detectives' lives as well. But it was, Hidden was a, the first series was a very interesting series. There was, some of it was Welsh speaking, which I, th I found very interesting, but it had subtitles, obviously, because it was speaking in Welsh. Um, and it was nice to hear the Welsh language, you know, it's not something you often hear, and it was, it was made a nice, um, a nice change. Uh, but like I say, it was very watchable. The ending was satisfying. Um, I won't give it away in case you haven't seen it. But yes, I do recommend Hidden. Now the next one, the next um, four series are all on Netflix. And this next one is Sex Education. Now if you're easily offended, do not watch this programme. It is very explicit. But it has to be one of the most funny programs I've watched in a long time. It is, as well as being hilariously funny, it is kind of um, poignant, maybe is the word, in, in some ways, because it covers a lot of, a lot of topics that maybe teenagers are dealing with at the moment. But just to tell you what it's about, it's about a, a socially awkward 16 year old called Otis. Um, and his mother is a sex therapist and she's played by Gillian Anderson who was in The X-Files and I've actually seen Gillian Anderson and some other things and didn't think she was a very good actress I thought she was quite one-dimensional but she's brilliant in this <laughs> really really good which I was surprised about it's it's set in well, I'm not sure where it's set in actually I think it was actually filmed in Wales but it's a very Americanized school um, the way those letter jackets, you know, that they get in America when they do sports. So it looks like it's American, but it's not. It's, it's, it, it is done in, in Britain. Um, and it's, it's about Otis, like I said, who's socially awkward. And he teams up with the bad girl from the school, school called Maeve. And they decide to charge their classmates to give them help with sex problems. So basically, he's given out sex advice. Maeve gets the, the customers in and he gives the advice. And it is really funny. It, but like I say, it's very, very explicit. So if you're easily offended, don't watch it. Um, they explore lots of different things, you know, lots of different sex subjects. Um, I, I won't go into what they are. But yeah, I, I definitely recommend Sex Education. There's been two series of it on Netflix and I think they're making a third series. And I, again, I binge watched this. I just thought it was really well written, really well acted. 
Um, one of my favourite characters in it was actually a, a, a boy called Adam, who was 17, 18, I think. Um, I think they're between 16 and 18, and he is the, the headmaster's son. Uh, and it, when the series starts, he's, he's very kind of heterosexual. But as, as it goes on, it, it turns out that he's, he's, he's actually bisexual. Um, I should maybe shouldn't have said that just in case you haven't watched it. But is it, it 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 talks you know it it goes through what he's going through and the problems that throws up for him. But definitely definitely worth watching. I would probably put Sex Education is my favourite series that I've watched in the last year. Thought it was brilliant. The next one is something completely different again, and this one is a fairly new series on Netflix, and it's called Next in Fashion. Um, if anyone watched Project Runway, it's very like that. So basically, again, a bit like an X-Factor premise, but with fashion designers. So it's presented by Alexa Chung and Tan France. Tan France um, is actually, when I was watching it, his accent was a bit odd. And I'm thinking, is he from, you know, is he from the northeast of England? He sounds very, you could get catches of a Geordie twang in there. He actually turns out he was from Doncaster. Again, I looked it up on IMDb. Uh, so the, the basic idea is it starts off with, I think there was 18 fashion designers, they put them into pairs and they give them a different theme every week of um, fashion to, to create. So everything from red carpet to active wear to underwear to military themed clothing. And they have to come up with this, this design and then they walk down the runway um, and you know the, the worst one gets voted out and the best one gets a pat on the back and eventually after the 10 episodes they get down to a final where somebody wins and I just thought it was I, I thought it was really good I like that kind of thing I loved Project Runway and I loved this as well um, some of the fashion is a little bit is anybody going to wear that and it, it's like where, how did they come up with these ideas but some of it did actually make me think, I really want to go shopping for clothes. So I, it, it was good. And the winner gets $250,000. So I'm hoping there's going to be a second series of that. So I definitely, definitely recommend Next in Fashion. Next one is, maybe a lot of people who are watching this will have already seen this. This was also on Netflix and it is The Crown. Uh, and if you don't know what The Crown is, it basically follows the life of the Queen. It is a, a fictional... A fictional series sort of hung on historical events so obviously you know that that kind of got a little bit of leeway on what they think the Queen might have said or done in, in certain uh, scenarios but it follows the life of the Queen from just before she became the Queen so from the 1940s and I've just finished the third series which I think takes you up to 1977 and each episode is kind of centered around historical events so we've been through when king george died and she actually became the queen um you know through the winston churchill years things like that they featured a bit about the um the landslide in wales where that school got buried i think that was in the 60s um the, it talks all about princess margaret's relationships especially the one with um Peter Townsend, I think he was called, which I found quite fascinating. And I have found it really interesting because a lot of these historical events, historical events, I didn't actually know much about. So it was nice to find out a little bit more, more about them. But like I say, obviously it's fiction. So probably a lot of it is just, you know, the, the writers made it up. But it, it, I did enjoy it. The strange thing about it was, after the first two series, they changed all of the actors, which I found a little bit strange. And the, apparently the writers have said it was because, or the producers have said, it was because they wanted to obviously portray the characters, the Queen and Prince Philip and all those, as they got older. But you just think, in films and things like that, they just age the character. You just, they just age the actors, you know, using makeup and what have you. But in this one, they decided to change them. Every single character was changed completely. So in the first two series, the Queen was played by Claire Foy and Prince Philip was played by Matt Smith. And I thought they were absolutely brilliant. I thought they were perfect in those roles. But when it came to the third series and they changed them to different actors, I, I just, I didn't enjoy it as much. 
Olivia Colman became the Queen and Tobias Menzies became Prince Philip. Now Olivia Colman, I think she was in Broadchurch, she was the detective in that, and Tobias Menzies was one of the characters in Game of Thrones. But with Olivia Colman, I just felt it was like watching a caricature of the Queen. It was like a, a comedy sketch. You were waiting for the punchline when, when you watched it. I still enjoyed it, but I don't think I enjoyed the third series as much as the first two. Maybe it was because of the change of actors, or maybe it was because of the the um, historical events that they, they centred around. Maybe I knew a little bit more about the later events than I did about the earlier ones. But for whatever reason, I definitely didn't find the third series as good. But I think the fourth series is coming out soon on Netflix, and I'll definitely watch it. And I think there's going to be six series altogether. And I believe they're going to change the actors again after the fourth series, so it's going to be something else to get used to with a new set of uh, actors. So we'll see how that plays out. But it's definitely worth a watch. I'm not a royalist, in fact I'm probably anti-royal, um, but I did find this very interesting. And the last thing on my list of uh, seven things that I've been watching recently is something called The Stranger. It is a, a kind of detective mystery series. I love detective mystery things. Are, you know, probably one of my favorite things to watch. And this has been adapted from a book by Harlan Coburn. I've seen a few things that have been adapted from his books and I have enjoyed them all. And I, I enjoyed The Stranger as well. Um, it's about a, a man who's got a wife and, and two sons. And he's just, you know, living his life quite happy. Well, it seems. Um, and then this, this girl comes up to him, somebody who he doesn't know, stranger, and she tells him a shocking secret about his wife. And when he confronts his wife about it, his wife doesn't deny it. And then she disappears. And so that's that's where really where it starts, you know, where is she, what, what's happened to her, you know, is the secret true? And they kind of bring in a few of their storyline strands and you, you, you think all the way through, you know, it's it's a who done it, you know? What's happened to her? You know who who's who's responsible for for whatever's happened to her? Um, and there's lots of twists and turns, and each story each storyline is really well tied up by the end. So there's no loose ends. It's well tied up. You do have to watch this series each episode really carefully. So don't try and do something else when you're watching it because you'll miss an important part. It is very involved, so you do have to watch it carefully. I thought it was well acted. Um, Siobhan Finneran, who was in uh, Benidorm, plays the detective in it. The storyline is a little bit far-fetched, but it's adapted from a book. It's not real life. Um, so if you, if, you know, if you just get over that fact, you will actually just enjoy it. Uh, like I said, it was it, everything was well tied up at the end. The ending was a little bit, really, that's what happened. Um, but I wasn't totally dissatisfied with it. But it's definitely worth a watch, The Stranger. I think there were six episodes of that as well. So well worth a watch if, you, if you're looking for something on Netflix. So those were my seven series that I've been watching recently on BBC iPlayer and on Netflix. I do have Now TV and... Prime as well, Prime Video, but I haven't been watching so much on those two. There hasn't been a lot on that I thought, oh, I really need to watch that. So if you've watched something recently that you think I might like based on what I've shared there, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I'd, I'd be really happy for your uh, opinions and your advice on what to watch next. I hope you thought that was interesting. If you've watched any of those and you had a different view to me, I'd also be interested to know. But that's all from me from now, so I'll see you again very soon, and thanks for watching.